Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to build the ultimate 14 bolt rear axle. This rear axle is not getting one, but two trusses to make it truly bulletproof. Let's check it out. So as you guys know, I'm building a CJ5 to be a rock crawler, but basically, just on the rock crawling side of a rock bouncer. And I'm using Artec Industries and all their awesome, super strong, bulletproof parts in order to build this rig to withstand some V8 abuse, 43 inch tires, 16 inch coilovers. I'm building these axles to basically take everything that I can throw at them. We're gonna talk all about this 14 bolt and how Artec Industries makes not one, but two trusses to make it super, super strong. Let's get after it. And here's my corporate 14 bolt that we're gonna be using. Now this corporate 14 bolt is from the 9906 model year. It's got that removable pinion out the front at 10 and a half inch ring gear. I've already re-geared it to a 538 gear with a Grizzly locker in it. Now it's time to strengthen the rest of it. Now 14 bolts are generally pretty strong, but everything has its limit. And today we're gonna raise that limit quite a bit. The axle tubes on a 14 bolt are fairly strong and of course, I always recommend that you weld the tubes to your diff. The first truss that I'm gonna put on this 14 bolt axle is gonna be Artec's rear 14 bolt short truss. You can look it up on their website. I'll link to it in the description. Now that truss is super strong because the entire top plate of that truss is made out of 3 8 thick steel plate. The rest of the truss is made at a quarter inch. So it's extremely strong. And because it's a short truss, it doesn't add a ton of weight to the axle. And it also is fairly low profile, but it actually is set up to a point where you can put your upper control arm mounts directly on the top with a nice wide flat plate at nine inches from the axle center line, which is pretty ideal when you're trying to set up your anti-squat and all get all your numbers dialed in so your rig handles on the trail. I'm using the short truss because this isn't a swap truss, right? If you need a swap truss, Artec makes those too. But on this axle, it's gonna be pretty custom, right? I built a custom frame. Nothing on this axle really is gonna need a swap truss. But if you wanna go completely custom with your build and you already have an axle that's got a swap truss, I'm actually doing that with my front Dana 60 using the JKJL JT swap truss on a completely custom frame on a CJ5. So stick around, make sure you watch because I'll show you how you can adapt things or at least how I'm gonna adapt things to make all that work. Now the first step on this rear truss was to completely take it apart and paint the inside, the place that is hard to get to once it's actually welded on the axle. I did that with one of those super high quality weldable spray paints. I highly recommend doing that. It's just gonna prevent the rust and corrosion, but in the places where you still need to weld, you can weld right through it. Pretty cool stuff and it doesn't burn off even when you weld on the other side. It doesn't burn off on the back side where you painted it, right? It's pretty cool, it'll handle the temperatures. So definitely make sure you do that. At this point, I'm gonna spray some of that weldable spray paint on the top tube of this axle, the part that I'm basically gonna be covering that you're never gonna see again. We're gonna set it up and weld it in. It's that simple. We're gonna let that dry. It dries pretty quickly. Then I'm gonna set the truss on there. We'll figure out exactly how the fitment is. And as if there was any doubt, Artec uses 3D models directly from the axle manufacturer and then a laser design process to make and cut their trusses. It just fits, which is awesome. But the first step in installing this truss, especially when you're doing it with a bridge, is to get the top actually welded in and in position because if you're gonna put that, tr that bridge on, it has a little bit of flexibility as far as how it's all gonna line up so that you can get your angle set correctly. So now I'm gonna adjust my pinion angle just a little bit for what's gonna work on this rig. Then we're gonna start tacking it in. With that pinion angle set, I'm just gonna tack all four corners of the truss to hold it in place. Now we get to start burning it in and finishing it up. It's always a good idea to skip around the axle tube, not put too much heat into one place and warp it. Now while the axle tubes are cooling, I'm actually gonna weld the parts of the truss where it keys and fits together up top, kind of spread out that heat. 
So it's not super difficult to install this truss on your 14 bolt. The only thing that you really have to pay attention to and make sure that you get at least as close to right as possible is your pinion angle. My build is custom, so I wound up putting the frame at ride height, taking some measurements, figuring out where my transfer case was gonna be, and then angling my pinion with the axle set at a height that should be what it's at when it's bolted onto wheels and tires. But if this is already under your vehicle, that part's gonna be easier. But at this point, with the truss finish welded pretty much everywhere, I, I am gonna add a little bit of weld to my casting here. But because of the design of the truss, there's actually nothing to weld to the rest of the casting. Where it gets its strength is actually from your pinion guard bridge. We're gonna get that bolted on, get that installed, and uh, you guys can see what it looks like before we move on with that second truss to make this thing truly bulletproof. Using the supplied hardware that came in the kit, loosely attach the bridge to the actual pinion guard support. And then at that point, we'll fit it back on the axle and weld it into place. Everything loosely bolted together. Slide that bridge back on there. So with these six bolts here snugged up, holding this plate onto my pinion carrier, and these pretty loose, allows me to kind of move it around and get this all into position. And I like the way that it's sitting right there. I actually like that a lot. So. At this point, what I'm gonna do is tighten up these bolts so it holds it in position and then start tacking things together to finish welded up. With the bridge welded in place, I removed the bolts and it's time to now put our pinion guard in. There's basically tabs where it keys together. You're gonna put it in, tack weld it into position, remove it once again off of the front of the casting, we'll finish weld it, grind it flat, and then reinstall it. That 14 bolt is looking fine. And it's now time to put on the second truss. That top truss provides a lot of strength and rigidity to this axle. While it increases a lot of the strength even in that front to back motion, putting something like Artex backbone truss on that axle is actually gonna strengthen it when you hit obstacles at speed in a forward direction and stop the tubes from bending front to back. But it does go across the diff cover, so there's some measurements you're gonna have to take, and depending upon your diff cover, they may be a little bit different than what I'm doing here, but right now, we're gonna mock it up. I'm gonna adjust the axle, pointing the diff cover at the ceiling, giving me a nice flat surface to work on, using the jack stand to make sure it's stable. Because we're just mocking it up, I'm gonna take the first piece of the truss and place it on the passenger side. This section here goes right up to the casting and it's even notched out for it. But I haven't painted the inside or the tube or any of the things that this is gonna cover just yet. We just wanna see how it fits. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. As you can see, the truss actually bolts with two bolts on the top as well as the bottom on both sides and it will get fully welded to the diff cover, but we obviously have to cut it. So what I'm gonna do is put a mark with a Sharpie right where the truss meets the diff cover, in this location and in that location. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Those two marks will let me know where the truss is essentially gonna go across the diff, and then I can start putting something over it to actually form fit it. Now I'm gonna try doing that with a piece of eighth inch metal rod. I might have to bend it with some pliers, but it should work pretty good and at least get me a nice shape. So simply taking that piece of eighth inch rod and going from one Sharpie mark on one side of the axle to the other on the other side of the axle, using my fingers, pliers, and even a torch to bend some of the more intricate parts of it, I was actually able to get a pretty good outline of this diff with minimal grinding when I was finished. After taking my time and triple checking that I had the form right, I set it on top of that center piece, traced it out with a Sharpie, flipped it over, did the same thing on the other side, and then got to cutting. Just be patient and make sure that it matches really well. All right, guys, and with a whole bunch of grinding, got this thing test fit on there right across the top of the diff cover. So it's really important to make sure your diff cover is lined up and in position and torqued down correctly because after that, in order to get all those bolt holes to line up, including the ones on the actual truss, 
you know, it's all gotta be right. Now there are two gussets that go inside the truss. I haven't installed those yet, so I'm gonna key those in and we're gonna get to it. But there is one thing that you have to pay attention to. The distance on this side of the truss where that gusset is gonna go versus this side of the truss is a little bit shorter over here on the passenger side. These two gussets are not the same length. I'm gonna prep this one, we're gonna slide it in. It keys in with these little tabs here by my fingers. We're just basically gonna tack weld it into place, make sure everything bolts back together before we weld it. It's also super important when you actually weld this into place that you have it bolted together and then you tack it in a number of places spreading out your heat. You don't wanna wind up welding something in and then go back later and now all of a sudden it doesn't fit on your diff cover or the bolt holes don't line up. With the axle tube painted where it's gonna be covered and everything on the inside of the truss also painted, it's time to skip around the axle and tack weld it into place. And even though this axle is way tougher now than it was before without all this added truss support, you still want to skip around, spread out that heat, make sure you don't warp it. Guys, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about adding a truss like this to your axle. I'm from the school of thought that it's better to have your axle be too strong than not strong enough. Obviously the 14 bolt is gonna be strong the way it is, but I've finished welded this thing, I've painted this thing up, it looks good and it's gonna perform even better. Guys, make sure that you give Artec Industries a check online before you start your build because they have a ton of builder parts and they have everything you need to throw one of these awesome axles underneath your rig and make it super strong. Guys, get out there, build something.